Hello, everyone. I am a you-can't-do-it survivor. When I was 12 years old, I told to my English teacher then that I want to teach English. She looked at me and she said, you can't do it, you have very bad pronunciation. Long time after that, I was very unsure of myself and I thought that she was right. It's amazing how one statement or phrase done by a person that we respect can influence our lives. Luckily, I managed to overcome that insight and pursued my dream. Now I teach English. And though that statement said by her was quite damaging, it did some good things as well. Now I am self-confident. I believe that what I am doing is my calling. So that's why I call myself a you-can't-do-it survivor. But not all people managed to overcome such statements that they heard in their lives, and their true potential has never been brought out. I am a pedagogist, and if we look at this word, pedagogia, you will know that it comes from Greek. Ago means I lead, paidos means child. So if we join these two words together, it means I lead a child. And I love this word, lead, in this sent sentence. Children come to this life with their potential, genetically coded qualities and abilities, which may be developed in their life and bring potential success. And I believe that educators' role is to help them develop these abilities, to walk down their path. We should not create unnecessary obstacles or share our judgments with them. On the contrary, we should help them, we should support them, we should teach them to learn from their victories and mistakes, make them understand that their hard work will definitely bring them where they belong. Now, how can we educators help them to unlock potential? I have three rules that I use in my work. First of all, I become their greatest fan. I am the greatest fan of my students. Fans are people who are enthusiastically devoted to someone or something. They are called supporters. They notice little details of the object of their fandom, and they support passionately and care with all their hearts. Fans' presence at sports arenas enhances sportsmen's performance. You know that sports demand a lot from players, both physically and mentally. They are, they are competing not only against their rivals, they are competing against themselves. Performing under pressure is usually difficult for everyone, but support of thousands of fans in the arena makes a big difference. Fans have no effect on sportsmen's physical ability, but they can build a sportsmen's psyche and they can enhance their concentration. What about us educators? How can we become the best fans of our students? There are some viral videos on, YouTube's, uh, on YouTube about uh, such teachers. To, uh, they illustrate how they build bonds with their students. On one video, you can see a secondary uh, school teacher who greets their, uh, his uh, students every day before they enter the classroom. And he created a special great, uh, greeting for every of the students. On the other video, you can see a special education teacher who invites in the morning every kid and tells them how wonderful they are, uh, what qualities he sees in them, he appreciates what they do or achieve in the class. So both these teachers show students that they see and appreciate them, which in turn, in turn boosts their feeling of acceptance and self-confidence, and later enhances their learning results. I also try to show my students that I am their biggest fan. I show that I care. And if I notice that my student uh, has, let's say, favorite pet, I will remember the name of this pet, and after two, three days, out of the blue, I will ask, 
How is your dog Bree doing? If they play some sports and they go on comp competition, next day, for sure, I will ask them, how did it go? And if they won, I will say, well done. If they lost, I will say, don't worry, you will make it next time. These little questions and remarks show kids that I care, that things which are important to them are also important to me, and they really are. Th they feel this care, and we establish special bonds which send signals to them that they are appreciated and that I am accompanying them on their way. In the academic setting, I observe on areas where my students are good at, and I always give them feedback about that, and also I try to see at least three, top three areas of difficulties. And then I try to help them understand where their problem is. And then, after some time, let's say when they write an essay, and don't make that mistake, I will always comment about that. I highlight on their progress. I teach students to see how they improve and grow. I twist an angle from mistakes being negative to mistakes being positive and even inspiring. Inspiring to progress, inspiring to move forward, inspiring to go beyond limits. And like a real fan, I am always there, there by their side. Number two, what I do, I see my students big. To illustrate the magic of seeing something as big, I will show you a little experiment with my dog Mars. He's really small, his body weight is about 2.2 kilograms, and if we speak about his brain, I'm not sure, but it should be about 58, 60 grams. Look what happens to Mars when my husband tells him that he's a big, dangerous dog. You will see the great boost in his self-confidence, and he really believes that he's a German shepherd. Look at his posture, look at his eyes. Big dog, rough fighter. Big dog, oh, 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 big dog, rough fighter. Oh, military dog, very good boy. Big dog, rough fighter. Oh, 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 big dog, big dog. Oh, you're a big dog. You're a big, dangerous dog. Oh my God, you're so big. Oh, oh, good boy. Good boy, you're so big. Oh, big dog. Rough fighter. Killer dog. Mm, German shepherd. Boxer. Everything you are. Good boy. Rough fighter. Oh, 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 big dog. That's so good. Mars behaves like this only when he's encouraged by my husband. So my husband sees him as, as a German shepherd. Mars behaves like a German shepherd. He be behaves like this only when he's encouraged. And I believe that this magic works on humans too. Child's brain by the age five is very close to the size of adult and to volume as well and weighs about 1.2 kilograms which is 20 brains of my dog. Imagine the power of any word which we say to kids in a 20 times bigger brain. If you say to a student, you cannot, that it's not for you, what will you do if you fail? That escalates in their brain and does not make them anything better. That makes them smaller. I started sailing last summer and uh, if you want to go from point A, which is in the west, to point B, which is in the east, and you have a crosswind coming from the north, you never head to the point B. You head somewhere above because you will drift and you will end up at point B. If you head to point B, you will end up below. The same works when we look at the man. We should see our students much bigger as they are, or even as they could be. If we take an individual as he is, we make him smaller. But if we take the man as he should be, we make him capable of becoming what he can be. And that was not said by me, that was said by Goethe two centuries ago, and by Viktor Frankl, who repeated that 50 years ago. Frankl said that we have to be idealistic and overestimating and overrating 
the man, looking at him from high above, and then we promote him to what he can really be. So when we are idealistic, we will end up at being realistic. So this gives a chance to an individual to unlock the potential. In my work, I sometimes get students who have really low self-esteem, and they do not believe that could they, they could ever pass any examination, and so on. And we work with them to make them big again. Let's say they have some goal, they want to pass IELTS examination, which is uh, English language testing examination, at a certain score. This is the first thing what we discover is their goal, what they want to have and when they want to have. Let's say they want to have 6.5 score in five months. Great. Next thing with what we do, we assess the level. And let's say the level is 5.0, 5.5. So we then understand what is the gap between what the student knows and where the student wants to be. And we assess this gap. And let's say to jump from 5.5 to 6.5, a student needs to learn about 2,500 words S and do at least two, three practice tests per day. So I give the study plan to a student that you have to learn 17, 18 words daily. And in five months, you will be there where you want to be. And a student starts to see that I see them big, I see that they can achieve this result. I believe that they can, and they start to believe that they can. This becomes a very strong motivation. They are free. There are no limits. They know the goal. They, they know how to approach it. And responsibilities in their hands. And that really empowers students. They feel in control of their lives, and many of them achieve everything that they have planned. But the most important miracle which happens is that they start to believe that they can. And I always tell students, if you believe that you cannot, you're right. If you believe that you can, you're right too. And understanding of this life truth takes them beyond their limits. And the last thing that I want to tell you and share with you is that I try to scare my students' fears off. Fears. We all have myriad of mental and emotional concerns that influence our choices in life and our behavior. We do things we are comfortable with and avoid doing certain things just because we are afraid of. And I have seen many brilliant people who do not do what they meant to do just because they are afraid. I believe that our greatest personal development lies in the direction of our biggest fears. By letting go one fear, we open doors for new opportunities, which bring us to places we never thought we might be. Because of my fear of water and depth, I learned to swim only five years ago. But already one year ago, I became a certified open water diver. So overcoming one fear opened an amazing underwater world for me with picturesque sights, colorful plants and fishes. One unimportant fear of water hid such beauties from me. The majority of students have fears, and you will be surprised that if you ask them, they really will answer. And I made a small research, a survey, and surprisingly, many of them have very typical fears. Primary school pupils are afraid to be laughed at. Teenagers are afraid to be rejected and, ev uh, and also to fail. University students are afraid of unknown. So basically, all their fears fall either to someone's disapproval or failure. So if I hear from my students that they are afraid, I always take time to speak about their fears and tell them that the Fears are like little monsters which exist only in our heads and they take our energy. We think of these monsters, we listen to them, we follow to their advice, we change our life according to their, them. Isn't that ridiculous? I disagree with that. 
I want to manage my life myself. So take time with your students to speak about fears because fears don't really exist if we let them go. And I really wish you to unlock your own potentials and potentials of your students. Thank you.